I realized that the horse was uh, you know, being bigger and stronger and having actually very uh, psychic abilities itself and real intuitive abilities, but the horse was a, uh, a helper, a friend, an ally, kind of like the magic carpet. It can take you vast distances and uh, when it's uh, traveling like the wind, you know, there was a, the people believed they had wings and so then you can imagine yourself to fly when you're riding across uh, at a gallop and you know, your arms are outstretched and you're, you're flying. The paintings are more like windows to dreams, I think, to fantasy worlds, to, um, to vistas. I find that sculpture, I've always been and now am more attracted to it than ever before because of uh, it's, it's solid, it's tangible. Where you have a, a pr process that you have to go through that uh, is far beyond standing in front of a painting and making dabs of paint go. So it's, which is to say it's very physical, which you're trying to, con again, control and abandon at the same time. So you're, as long as you have the attitude that you can't control it, then you come closer to controlling it. And if you get these wonderful pieces of clay that have actually changed and bent and moved and worked because of pure proximity of heat. You, you can't say, look what I did. You know, you have to say, man, look what the kiln, look what nature did, look what, you know, what the fates did. Many of the clay pieces are the one, the clay work is often what becomes the bronzes. And I am fortunate to have, you know, Rick Frignasser or Soda to be my collaborator. So we generally say we're going after a stone look, like jade, turquoise, and whatnot. Then, then when the sculpture ends up being a finished product, uh, that really uh, fakes people out that they think this is really a huge, giant chunk of turquoise or, or jade or something like that. Then I can, you know, attest to the skill of um, an alchemist, um, Rick Vignaka, who uh, has the eye and mind of a painter at the same time. When you talk about process, you simply are saying, you know, let uh, have faith in the universe and let the peace unfold as it will. You can train for it. You can study um, uh, to be the, the best technician you can, but really what you have to do is open up and allow um, the universe, if you will, come through uh, you and let you become a midwife uh, and let you become the channel for what all your training is about. And then the real rewards are, um, is something politely presents itself to you as a revelation and awareness and you, you are allowed and rather trying to make things happen you're in the position of receiving things towards you. The wooden piece um, which was called laid back horse was some uh, angel or some fate was standing over my shoulder and said now don't force this thing just look and see what's here at work follow the grain see what it has to offer and so I was fortunate just to let that piece of wood talk to me. If there uh, is excellence in that uh, exquisite refinement, then you become excellent, you know, as the maker, as the midwife. And, and uh, I think inherent in that is these intangible qualities that we call beauty and truth and grace and goodness, you know, which I think the world needs a lot of.